Jujutsu Kaisen is an anime that started airing this fall. It's chock full of supernatural elements sure to make your spine tingle. As easy as it is to get caught up in Jujutsu Kaisen's dynamic action and cursed spirits, today I want to focus on the paranormal occurrences in Jujutsu Kaisen and how they relate to actual occult beliefs in Japan. Right off the bat, a disclaimer. In Jujutsu Kaisen, Gege Akutami Sensei has created an incredibly intricate and carefully built world. We're still early in the series and there's a whole lot we don't know about how Yuji and his pals wield their powers and what exactly those powers are. Are. So, I want to be clear that the occult concepts we'll be discussing today are not a perfect interpretation of Akatami Sensei's creation. I'm hoping that by digging into folklore and occult beliefs in Japan, I'll be able to give you a deeper cultural context for a supernatural anime that takes that rich cultural tradition and puts it in a blender to create something totally new. New. Now, if you're hoping to leave this video today with a thorough understanding of the domain expansion technique, well, this is not that video. But you will learn a little bit more about the paranormal side of Japanese culture. With all that said, let's get into it. So, to start at the very beginning, in the first episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, we meet Sugisawa Municipal High School's Occult Research Club. Just like the Scooby Gang, the Occult Research Club are investigating a paranormal incident. That Ouija board looking thing that they're using, it's reminiscent of Kokuri-san, a divination board game that was most popular during the Meiji era. Like the Ouija, the Japanese believe spirits guide the Kokuri, allowing them to send messages to Kokuri-san users. Now, you might feel some type of way because your school didn't have a paranormal mystery club. Sorry kids, I guess uh, I guess you should have gone to school in Japan. Ghosts, demons, and the supernatural have been part of Japanese folklore since at least the Heian period, and they were particularly popular in the Edo period, when an entire genre known as kaiden or ghost stories became popular. The Showa era also had a paranormal golden age as part of its post-war cultural transformation, and the 1970s experienced another peak in spoopy stuff, with accounts of cryptids, alien abductions, UFO sightings stealing the spotlight. Paranormal stuff was so popular in the 70s in Japan that it was known as the golden age of the occult. Part of this cultural interest has to do with Japan's two most popular religions. Shintoism and Buddhism. These two religions are closely interconnected in Japan that have inspired many cultural traditions. Shinto belief centers on kami or spirits which are believed to inhibit all things, while Buddhism believes in six states of existence. Humans, animals, ghosts, demons, deities, and hell beings. These spiritual states are part of Buddhism's wheel of becoming. With that as a baseline, it's easier to understand how Akatami Sensei may have taken inspiration from these religions from time to time. Of course, Jujutsu Kaisen definitely takes it to another level with cursed dolls, cursed spirits, and hauntings making up a troublingly huge part of day-to-day -day life. But, you know, that's, that's anime for you. Thankfully for literally everyone who lives in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen, Jujutsu Sorcerers exercise all those spirits to keep us regular people nice and safe. Some, sometimes. Anyhow, our beloved protagonist Yuji Iradori has his first run-in with Jujutsu Sorceress when he meets Megumi Fushigoro, the boy with one of the spikiest hair I've seen in a while. So, going back to the start of episode 1, we see the silver-haired pretty boy Satoru Gojo interrogating Yuji while he's bound to a chair. In other anime, you may have seen slips of paper like these before. They're called Ofuda and they're our next stop on the Paranormal Express. Ofuda are talismans that you can get at Shinto shrines. These special blessed papers often have drawings or characters and are considered sacred because they are believed to contain the essence of the shrine's kami. As such, they're imbued with special powers. They also come in many forms and can be made of paper, wood, or cloth. 
paper ofudas are what's called kamifuda, and that is what I want to talk about today. In anime, you'll often see kamifuda used for binding, but they can also have more run-of-the-mill uses, like to bring good luck on exams or help you catch fish. My dad could definitely use one of those um, fishing kamifudas. Anyhow, in the anime world, we often see ofudas doing some heavy lifting to wield spells and bind no good baddies. They often go hand in hand with shimenawa, sacred ropes that can be found at, you guessed it, Shinto shrines, which are also used for binding or warding evil spirits. So we're still at episode one and Yuji already loses the one he loved the most. We watch as he bids his final farewell to his granddad in a traditional Japanese cremation ceremony. Now, this doesn't have anything to do with the supernatural, but since my job here today is to fill in some cultural blanks, you know, let's let's take a closer look, shall we? Cremation is an important part of the funeral rites in Japan, and the process differs a lot from what people in the US are used to. For one, family members watch as their loved one's body is placed into a cremation chamber. They leave while the cremation takes place and return when it is completed, at which point they do a bone picking ceremony or kotsuage. Kotsuage has roots in both Buddhism and Shintoism, and it's what we witness in episode two. In a bone picking ceremony, relatives of the deceased go through the ash and transfer bones to a urn, moving them from foot to head so that their loved one is upright in the urn. Sometimes relatives pass bones back and forth between their chopsticks or even hold them at the same time. In other venues, this would be a faux pas, but it's an important part of kotsuage. Now, sadly for Yuji, he doesn't get to do this because no other family member was at his grandfather's kotsuage. As a freshman in Tokyo Jujutsu High School, Yuji comes into contact with plenty of creepy crawlies, from cursed beings to cursed dolls to this guy. Akatami Sensei has intricate explanations for all of these creatures that I'm sure we'll learn in due time. But to give us a general sense of what we're working with, I want to introduce you to Shikigami. That's another word you probably heard a few times throughout your anime career. Shikigami are conjured beings that are connected to the spiritual energy of the conjurer. Shikigami takes many forms, sometimes showing themselves as animals. So far, all of the battle buddies we see Megumi Fushiguro summon are animals too. Now, pause. Do you see that hand sign he does before he summoned those shadow puppets? They're sort of like another anime staple. These hand signs are known as mudra, or ritual hand gestures. Now, everyone who's ever tried to do a ninja jitsu knows what those hand signs are. Like a lot of what we talked about today, mudras have their roots in Buddhism. Ever notice how many depictions of the Buddha show him using mudra? But not all ritual hand gestures are mudra. Ritual hand gestures have been used since ancient times, often to signify something important, like taking an oath or making a covenant or promise. So it makes sense that in anime, we often see characters using hand gestures to summon strength, power, and even supernatural pals. Let me try one and I'll do the, I'll do the, I think this is how you do a dog. Nobara Kugisaki also uses weapons and techniques that have ties to Japanese mysticism. There is a ritual that uses hammers and nails in Japan. This Shinto ceremony is typically performed by a spurned woman. Practitioners use long nails called Gosan Kugi to pierce straw dolls. These special dolls are called Waraningyo and they represent the curse's intended victim. As part of the ritual, practitioners will often use a hammer to nail the Waraningyo to a tree. Nobara puts her own spin on these tools by using them to beat the ever-living hell out of some cursed beings. Mwah, gotta love a gotta love a good twist on a classic. Mm. Now we've talked about sorcerers, we've talked about curses, but what about the big bad himself, Ryomen Sukuna? Well, in my research, I couldn't uncover anything about an evil spirit that seemed related to Ryomen Sukuna. But there is an onsen spirit named Sukuna Bikuna. Like I said, he is not related to Ryomen Sukuna, but you know, he sounds like a pretty chill guy, you know? He's the Shinto Kami of Onsen, Agriculture, Healing, Sake, and Knowledge. Some even credit him with inventing Sake. Man just seems like 
a nice dude, you know, he just loves a good bath and a little drink, you know, who can blame him? But uh, yeah, he's definitely not the Sukuna we know from Jujutsu Kaisen. So there are plenty of other monsters in Japanese folklore, enough to do a whole other video on. These monsters are known as Yokai and sometimes Ayakashi or Mononoke, and not all of them are bad, and plenty of them are just playful and mischievous. Uh, you've probably heard a bunch of them, like uh, Kappa, Kitsune, and Tanuki, but those cuties don't have a lot in common with Ryomen Sukuna. If you happen to know something that I don't, drop a line in the comments down below. And if I mispronounce something, you know what to do. You no, just call me out. I can't read. I can't. Man, I can't read. I'm just scratching the surface of Japanese folklore in this video. And I'm not an expert. Also, part of the joy of watching anime is sometimes we get to learn about a different culture. So, hopefully, I've inspired you to dig a little deeper because this is just the beginning. Thank you for watching and be sure to check out Jujutsu Kaisen yourself on www.crunchyroll.com, baby. And let me know, what type of girls do you like? That's a, that's a reference to a, to a character in Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm, 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 not, a, I'm not a creep. Um, uh, yeah, the, <clears throat> the ending bit. Make sure you subscribe to Crunchyroll. Press the little, you know, things that pop up, the rectangles, the whole shebang. And I'm, that's the end. Bye-bye.